Hey book nerds, welcome to my channel. It is time for another mid-month wrap-up. Um, August is going interestingly so far. I've read nine books and I'm currently in the progress of reading I think five other ones at the same time, which I almost never do. I've only finished nine which is kind of, it's kind of on track for me, maybe a little bit slower than I normally am. But I'm going to finish all these books at the same time, which is just going to be chaos. Um, but yeah, so far I'm going to talk about the ones that I have read. I might not make it through all nine. I'm trying to keep these a reasonable length, so I'll just stop when I think I've spoken for long enough. So that being said, let's start going through what I've read so far. The first book I finished was an arc, and it was The Third Mrs Durst by Anne Aguirre. This came out on the 8th of August. Um... This is a thriller and I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars, which is insanely high for me for a thriller. This was really, really enjoyable. It was so much better than I thought it'd be. And it's kind of... So the plot is it's about this woman who has married this man, Mr Durst, and she essentially crawled up from her poor upbringing. She became a model. And she specifically was trying to catch his attention and she manages to succeed and she marries him but he is not really the nicest of husbands and that's all I can really say about this book there's a lot going on that I think is better if you go in blind this isn't a thriller with a ton of twists or a ton of big surprises but my connection to the protagonist and the fantastic writing style kept me engaged throughout and I really wanted to know what happened next. So while it's not full of surprises, I couldn't predict what was going to happen either. And I really, really enjoyed that. Um, I forgot to say as per usual, but all my arcs and some other books that I've read will have blog posts and I'll link them all down below. So check the description if you want to hear more about any of these books because there might be a blog post attached and there definitely will be if it's an arc. Um, but yeah, so this was, I was so happy to finally have an arc from NetGalley for a thriller that I really enjoyed because I have such bad luck with those and I hate trashing books that I get given arcs of, but I always have to do it with the NetGalley ones. But yeah, this was super enjoyable. I definitely recommend checking it out if you like the description and if you enjoy thrillers in general, it's one to keep an eye out for. The next book I finished made me a bit sad and that was I'm a Gay Wizard by V.S. Santoni. This I could only give 3 out of 5 stars to, and I, this was technically a DNF for me. I did read about maybe maybe 30 to 40%. I got quite far through, but it just wasn't working for me, so I skim read the rest, and I gave it a rating based not on my opinion of it, which is what I normally do, but because I felt this book was good, it just wasn't for me. So this is part... Um, it's essentially about these two kids. So yeah, so the main character is gay and Latinx. And then his best friend is a trans girl called, I think she's Alison, Abigail, one of the two. And they both have, um, they come up with this magical spell to curse this guy who's really horrible to um, the girl. And then they catch the attention of this institution for magical kids. And it's like the polar opposite of Harry Potter. It's basically a prison. Um, so they get kidnapped and taken to the school. All their families get their memories wiped of them. And then it's kind of just about them being at the school. And there's all these like conspiracy things going on. Um, the reason this wasn't for me is it is... I knew it was a fantasy going into it. But it's one of those fantasies where there's loads and loads of made up terms to describe the world and I can't get into fantasies like that. It sounds weird because I know that's a huge part of the fantasy genre but I'm very particular about the type of fantasy I read and it just felt like there was just so many terms being introduced and I couldn't keep track of what any of them meant. So I couldn't follow the plot particularly well. The characters were really likeable actually. I did really enjoy the characterization. There is a romance in here. There's a male-male romance. And I wasn't a massive fan of that. It's got kind of a problematic start to it. It's not super bad. It's just um, a bit questionable. But 
this started life as a book on Wattpad and you can kind of tell that but also I was surprised by the sheer amount of creativity in this because I'd heard that it was basically like gay Harry Potter but there's it's really nothing like Harry Potter and it should be commended for the fact that it's so little like Harry Potter when they both have the basic premise of magical school um but yeah I think this book would be really good for people who like that kind of fantasy and particularly as well for teenagers obviously it's written for teenagers but yeah, it was a disappointment for me but I still think it's a really good book it had a lot of creativity like I said and it has a lot of good points so if you like the description I would recommend checking it out you might get more enjoyment from it than I did the next book I read was Please Send Help by Gabby Dunn and Alison Raskin this is the sequel to I Hate Everyone But You um, I gave this four out of five stars this is a contemporary book and it's about these two girls, um, Ava and Va Val? I think it's Val. I'm really bad with character names if you couldn't tell. Um, so these two characters, essentially in the first book, they've both gone off to different colleges and they're best friends and it's their emails and texts to each other while they're at colleges and the story is told that way. And the second book is a follow on from that when they're kind of adults just starting their careers and I loved this book. I gave the first one, I think I gave it 3 out of 5 but really it probably should have been a 3.5 out of 5. It was good, it had some problems. This one kind of fixed all the problems and I really really enjoyed it. I just love these characters so much and I think it's the kind of book where it really does depend on how much you connect to the characters and how much you like them because of the way it's told and because the plot is essentially just their lives and their interactions. But I really enjoyed it. It's very short, um, very quick to read and yeah I, I recommend it definitely. The next book was a bit of a spontaneous choice and that was I Partridge We Need to Talk About Alan by Alan Partridge who is a fictional character. It's actually by Steve Coogan who is the actor slash comedian who plays him. So I listened to this on audiobook and I would definitely recommend listening to it on audiobook because it's narrated by Steve Coogan and it's basically like just so much better of an experience because of that. So Alan Partridge is a British TV show. It's a very short British TV show and it's about this guy, Alan Partridge, who is basically a loser and it's very much cringe comedy. If you like The Office, British Office, that kind of thing or Peep Show, you'll probably really enjoy this. Um, my brother's obsessed with it which is how I got into it as a show but essentially he wants to be like a tv presenter and his career is not going very well and he's a terrible person so he kind of causes his own downfall and that's where the comedy comes from um and the book is his autobiography and it's brilliant because it covers events from the tv show so if you've seen the tv shows and you've listened to his radio shows and stuff like that you it's written from his point of view so you get his biased um as a character he's very full of himself so you get his biased view is basically you, he lies in the book about what happened so if you've seen the tv show and you know what really happened there's comedy from that it's just generally funny um it's hard to explain if you don't know what the tv show is so i can't really say much more about it i gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars um because it's just really especially the audiobook is really a great experience and it's a extended experience from the tv show um but yeah that's all i can really say about that but I recommend checking out Alan Partridge if you haven't and you like the other shows that I mentioned because I think it's lesser known than them and I think it's equally enjoyable. Next book is also an arc and I'm really excited to finally talk about it and it is The Perfect Wife by J.P. Delaney. This is a thriller and I gave it five stars which basically never happens. Um, I'm so happy to have finally found a five star thriller. I did give If We Were Villains five stars but that's kind of it is a thriller but it's also more of a story whereas this is like a straight up thriller it's hard to distinguish but anyway <laughs> so this and um, this came came out on the 8th of august so it's out now and this is about a woman who wakes up in a hospital and she's told by her tech genius husband that she's a robot now 
she's been dead for five years she wakes up and she's a robot and she's had the consciousness of his wife implanted into her and that's all I really want to say about the plot um I think the blurb gives away a little bit more but I went into this pretty much just knowing that as the basic concept and I really recommend going in blind to this. It's such a good experience. This is a fantastic it's a fantastic way to apply science fiction principles in a thriller setting. And I think it executes that brilliantly. So it explores a lot of what it means to be human and the general kind of common questions that get explored in AI fiction. But it does it in a thriller setting, which I think adds a unique spin on it. And it brings a really creative... Uh, angle to the thriller narrative so this book not only surprised me it surprised me multiple times and I was literally stereotypical on the edge of my seat reading it but that doesn't happen for me with thrillers I don't I love thrillers but I never ever give them five stars and I never ever feel like the endings are as good as I wanted them to be in general whereas this one it just it worked for me and I don't want to hype it up too much because thrillers I think are very um personal to you and some people might read this and be like oh I could see exactly what was coming but for me I just loved it and I really recommend checking it out I've not read anything by JP Delaney before um I've got a couple of their books on my TBR which I'll definitely be prioritizing now but yeah this was such a wonderful surprise and I love it and it made me so happy that I was able to not only give a thriller five stars, but give a thriller arc five stars. So yeah, I cannot recommend this enough. Um, I loved it. The next book I read was Kill River 2 by Cameron Rubicu. I was reading this as part of the Bloody Beach Readathon. I will link their Twitter down below as per usual. Last month we read Kill River um, and I Call Upon Thee. I didn't get around to that one. And then this month it's Kill River 2 and Something Borrowed, Something Blood Soaked, which I am still hoping to read. It's a short story collection. It sounds really cool. This is a horror book about a water park. And um, the first one is basically this girl goes to summer camp, makes some friends, they try to escape from the summer camp and they find this abandoned water park at night and they break in, have a good time, but there's a serial killer there. <laughs> and the sequel is about one of the kids who's escaped from the first book and they're reopening a water park that has the same design as the water park they escaped from and there's another serial killer <laughs> So. Yeah, the first book I thought was good, but it only got started about 50% of the way through. This one was a lot better with that. It still had a bit of a slower start than I was expecting. And again, it's still around the 50% mark that the murders and stuff start happening. But I felt like the beginning of this book was more relevant to the overall plot than the beginning of the last book. Um, it did wear a little bit thin on me. I think I gave this... I did give this four stars, which is what I wanted to give the first one, but I had to bump it down because of the slow start. Um, so yeah, this gave me more of what I wanted. It still wasn't perfect, and I still think there's better ways to execute the concept, but it's got some really cool horror imagery. Um, my main criticism with this one, actually, that wasn't present in the first one, is I thought they killed the interesting people too close together. It seemed like all the characters died pretty suddenly once people started dying and that was a bit of a shame because I was like oh we don't get the horror aspect of the, like the whole point of introducing characters in a horror book is so that when you kill them off there's an impact but then if you kill them all off together then you don't get to see the impact of the horror situation on the other characters. So that was a bit of a shame. But yeah, this is still a really good summer horror read if you're looking for something to read on the beach that's not your typical like romance or contemporary. I would re definitely recommend this. And I will be reading Cameron Rubicu's other works because they are just some really good classic horror books. The next book I read was Once Upon a Rainbow, Volume 1, which is an anthology. I read this as part of Fairy Tale-a-thon, which I will link the Twitter down below. It was a fairy tale themed readathon. This I was super excited for. Um, I didn't know it was erotic, <laughs> and that's kind of the best way to sum up my opinion of it. I gave this 3 out of 5 stars because I didn't know it was erotica, and erotica's not usually my jam. 
I thought this was like gay retellings of fairy tales and it is but it's like sexy gay retellings of fairy tales and I just don't enjoy reading about fairy, fairy tale characters in a sexy way it was a little uncomfortable to be honest um putting that to one side in general the stories were interesting a lot of them I thought missed the mark even with the erotica because for example there was one called the little match girl that I thought was the worst because it went from um scenes of like a character freezing to death to full-on sex in a page and that's just like a bit of a whiplash to be honest <laughs> even if you're into the erotica it's I don't think that people would really enjoy the sudden swerve and it's not in a whole like oh you're freezing let me warm you up kind of way it's literally like oh no your toes might fall off let's bang <laughs> that's that's basically what happened um so yeah I think there's a couple more volumes of this I might check them out out of curiosity my other criticism was that some of the stories either didn't follow the fairy tales particularly closely or they were too similar so there were three stories that involved Sleeping Beauty and there's only about nine stories in the collection so it just felt like they could have used different fairy tales and had a more interesting spin on that. Um, but yeah, it wasn't terrible. It was the other book I read for Fairy tale -thon was Tangleweed and Brine by Deirdre Sullivan. This I gave 3.5 stars out of 5 to. I really enjoyed this. This is not erotic. <laughs> this is basically kind of feminist retellings of fairy tales but they're not really that feminist they're more kind of lyrically beautiful feminist themes rather than changing the story to be more feminist so it's more like musings on the characters involved in these stories and whether they are perceived fairly um, this is split up into two sections so well technically three so the first section is tangleweed and then the second section is Brian. The final section is they all lived happily ever after. So the first section is kind of uh, land-based stories. And this was my least favourite part. I thought that the retellings of the stories were kind of um, not basic, but they don't really change much or add much. The other thing I'll say quickly is that all these stories, bar one or two, are told in second person so they're all like you do this and you do that which I thought was really interesting it did kind of get repetitive but it was it worked on the whole that wasn't really a problem but it might be something that other people want to avoid reading about um but yeah so for example with the tangleweed section it retells Cinderella, Red Riding Hood, Rapunzel, Hansel and Gretel, Rumpelstiltskin, Fair Brown and Trembling which I'd not heard of and Snow White so the majority of these I'd heard of and I knew the stories quite well and I don't think that the um, style of it, while beautiful, added much. Whereas with the brine section, I really loved most of the stories. So the ones in that were A Little Mermaid, The Frog Prince, Blue Beard, Donkey Skin, The Goose Girl and Beauty and the Beast. The Frog Prince was really good. Uh, Blue Beard was my favourite, I believe. And... The Goose Girl as well was super interesting. So most of the stories in that section I really enjoyed and even if they weren't my favourites they still added something really interesting. So I would definitely recommend this collection. The only other thing that I have to say about this book is the final story is um, Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, the final one is Sleeping Beauty and it's called, well actually it's the section is called And They All Lived dot 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 and then it's got the story called Waking Beauty. And this was a really dark story and I know the story of Sleeping Beauty is dark and I know, like I know what happens, you don't need to tell me in the comments that it's accurate to the fairy tale because I know it's accurate to the fairy tale but it was just really bleak and sad and I was kind of expecting it to end on an uplifting, empowering note and it kind of ends on this sad... Um, it's definitely the darkest story out of all of them because it doesn't shy away from the dark elements of the fairy tale but I just thought it was a weird way to end the anthology because it kind of left me on a sour note and a little bit of a confused note as well which I don't think is ever a good sign but yeah this book is still beautiful and I'm very glad I read it it did I did enjoy a lot of the stories
And the final book I've read so far this month is Hello, Goodbye and Everything in Between by Jennifer E. Smith. So this is a contemporary. I gave this 3.5 out of 5 and this is about a girl and a boy who are about to go off to college and they're trying to decide whether they should break up or stay together and they go on this little trip around their town to all the landmarks that were significant in their relationship. They've been dating two years and they run into their friends and it's basically about coming to terms with going off to college. I really enjoyed this book. It's definitely got a very basic premise which isn't necessarily a bad thing in a contemporary. Um, it doesn't add a lot beyond that basic premise so if that premise doesn't interest you you're not going to want to read this book. But this was a really cute, sad, poignant romance story. It was kind of what I needed to cleanse my palate after a lot of the like before Thriller Sun begins and I read all these intense thriller books. Um, yeah I really enjoyed it. I would have given it four stars if it weren't for the fact that it was pretty basic but it was a really I won't say nice story, it was a really interesting story and I got invested in the characters relationship and I loved the way it ended. I thought the way it ended was perfect. I'm obviously not going to spoil it but it was it was a clever ending. So yeah, that is all the books I've read so far in August. I hope you're having a good August. Let me know what you're reading. Let me know if you've read any of these, what you think of them. Um, if you're going to read any of these, you should read The Perfect Wife, just saying. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me out massively and I hope to see you next time.